Yo, we've stopped. Why? Stretch our legs. Me back here. Careful, Bella. Mum, it's a country town. What's going to happen? <laughs> Hey guys, I'm with Zach now down at Supernova in Sydney talking about his role in the film Occupation. We caught up with you last week in Melbourne at Comic-Con. Um, how does Comic-Con and Supernova, how do the fans differ from each other? The, as far as the creativity is concerned, they're both the same. They're both yeah. absolutely spectacular. But the setups are obviously quite different. Like obviously, yeah. I think with Supernova, they tend to give more Australian content a push. Yeah. But this is the, I think this is the biggest one we've been to. Yeah, right. I mean, I don't want to... I hope the Gold Coast doesn't take that the wrong way because the Gold Coast was massive. But yeah. This is just this is quite staggering. Actually, yeah. every time I come to it, I'm, 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 this is my first ever convention tour. Yeah. I've never done one. Everyone I've been to, I've just been blown away. Have you seen any amazing cosplay? Because I know I have, but is there any that stand out for you? Th there are some rippers. I mean, you see a lot, a lot of the yeah. same ones. You see some really good Star Wars ones. You see some great Ghostbusters ones. You see some incredible, like, uh, World of Warcraft and Sailor yeah. Moon things. But it's the, the random ones that you see that are incredible. I saw one last week in Melbourne. There was a bloke dressed as Robin Williams from Jumanji yeah, right. when he I first... Did you see him? Yeah. And he first comes out of the, out of the game. It's incredible. Yeah. And I just saw a Neo go past a moment ago, and it was just <laughs> spot on. Simple, but you just go, Neo. Do you guys get a chance to actually have a look, or are you just booked out all day? I've got a funny story about that, actually. <laughs> the first time I went to the Gold Coast, I was just overwhelmed, because this is kind of my jam. I kind of like this stuff. I really yeah. I really get into it. And I was walking off, and I was snapping selfies with people who were all dressed up, and Carmel, the producer, actually had to wrangle me. She's like, Zach, get a puppy. You've got to sit here and sort of things. And so, sorry, 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 sorry. So I'm sort of got one eye out here checking everything out. And during my break, I'm going to go... Yeah, yes. I think you really need to. I think. Well, it, I, well I can because uh, I'm. Yeah. No one, no one knows who I am. You know, <laughs> but uh, but you know, people know who Steffi and Rounded yeah, and yeah. Dan are. So they go off to the coffee machine. And I sort of go out there and get amongst it. I really like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you guys have obviously spent heaps of time together on the set making the first film, so you'd know each other pretty well. Um, if there was a real alien invasion film uh, event to happen, not yeah. a film, a real alien invasion, yeah. who would you save? Who would I say? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Well, I guess it comes down to practical application and who can bring the most... I mean, first thing you've got to save um, Dan Ewing because you need his gene genetics in the future. So he's got to be there just so the human race can be beautiful and also practical, I think. Um, Tim Morrison, because he, he can find food anywhere. Yeah. He can find food absolutely anywhere and he just he can sense it. He has this sixth or seventh sense maybe to, to just know where the tucker is. Uh, they're two for sure. Uh, oh, Steffi Jacobson as well. Yeah. She's actually quite... She's, she's quite badass, isn't she, in the trailer? I, I feel safe any time I'm around her. In fact, there's a, there's a scene in the film where we jump in the cane. Uh, for, when you see, you'll know what I mean. And I'm actually holding onto her arm as this yeah. big alien ship flies over our head. And I, I just noticed it in the screening the other day, but I don't know what happened. We just shooting and I just... I don't know why I subconsciously just grabbed onto her arm like I'm a little kid and she was my mother. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're definitely the three that come to mind for sure. And where would you hide yourself? What, what's the hot tip for surviving something like this? This is an interesting conversation. Because yeah. I know lots of us have the conversation about the zombie apocalypse yeah, and where yeah, we go. Sure. And I think the general consensus, I could be wrong, was Bunnings for the, for the uh, zombie apocalypse. Well, yeah, I mean, there's weapons in there. You could, yeah. it's, it's high off the ground. Yeah. There's sausages. You know, there's always a yeah, sausage. sausage. Aliens, however, depends on the technology. But I know that in Newcastle, where I'm from, we would often play this game quite a bit where we, we would think about this. And Fort Scratchley was a great place to hide in town. It's an old fort, so it's deep, buried deep into the ground. And it, it actually honeycombs into the earth. And it connects up into mines that are still under the earth. So it's like a ready-made underground society in the middle of Newcastle. So it's great yeah. for guerrilla warfare, so I think. I think we all need to remember that if something... Well, yeah. in Newcastle, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, according yeah. to Zach, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and get any sort of Mrs. Max meat pies, because I think that would survive the apocalypse without question. Who is the big hero on set? I mean, you can say yourself if you want to. Oh, it wasn't me. No way. No way. Was, I'm just giving was, people that option. <laughs> Thank you. Has anyone said yes? Not yet. No, they've, oh, all, they've always said someone else. <laughs> you didn't even say that? I, he, I think he might have. He alluded to me. Uh, He's yeah. waiting for someone else to say it. <laughs> I, um, I, I, we laughed a lot. And I've got to say, there was, a, there was a, a term that was used in the script that Luke wrote called the trio. And it was often used on the call sheets. And when they said the trio, it referred to uh, Dan, Steph and myself. So every time I was working with those two, it was yeah. a lot of fun because we just yeah. laughed a lot and you feel comfortable, feel at ease. But I had a lot of time working with Izzy and Izzy, for me, 
was always wonderful to work with because we had so much to work with amongst our characters. Yeah. There's a lot that happens between us in the film. So for me, going to her, I guess it was sort of, you could describe that as heroic because every time I went to work with her, it was always exciting because yeah. we were just like, okay, I'm ready to go. I just want to get stuck into this today. And Tem, Tem was wonderful because I, with Tem, there's act, some actors you work with and you work together to make something and there are others you just sit back and just relax, yeah. you know, and, and they, they naturally lead the way. And Tem was like that. But then my scenes, he always took the lead. Yeah. And so I got to sit back and just enjoy the ride with him. Cruise on through, yeah. <laughs> so much fun, yeah. So Steph, Dan, Ste Steph and Dan, we always had a great time together. And Izzy and Tem, incredible. Is this kind of movie where you see yourself going? Or do you want to do more like Occupation? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Cause, uh, I know Luke's doing the sequel in August. So yeah. uh, fingers crossed things work out for that. Um, but, mate, I... Oh, yeah. Th th this was... This is incredible because it's. Well, I think I, I alluded this in the Q and A last week in Melbourne. It's something that you, as a, as a kid growing up watching cinema, you absorb these yeah. things naturally, and I think you, you're about the same age as me and Luke and everybody else. The films that we watched in the '90s, early 2000s, that was probably the last of the true blockbuster yes. era, if you will. Yeah. So a lot of those films that we watched just naturally absorbed into us, yeah. and those uh, characteristics or if you will those uh, impressions sort of carried into my work and my pursuits as an actor now when you become an actor you, you sort of people people see you in different ways and they yeah. kind of go well you play this role play this role play this role and you just follow the direction you follow the lead yeah. and you bring your part to it and you, and you go from there but it was the when I did this it was when all those sort of uh, impressions of the old Roland Emmerich movies and you know Spielberg and George Lucas and all these great films that we watched growing up started to kind of come to the fore and you felt like you were actually in something. There's a great connection with shooting on location, which we did with this, is the scent, smell. Yeah. When you're in a sound stage, it's uh, it, 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 it's so fabricated, you know. And then, of course, America does that a lot, and it's amazing because you get immersed into this colossal yeah. world. But when we're on set in the field with Aaron and all these incredible actors you could smell it you could yeah. smell the earth and you could smell the rain and that's what made it all the more real for me yeah. so I, I can't wait to do it again. well hopefully yeah. hopefully get to do it again it'd be I, lovely I think it's going to be amazing it drops on July 12th we're all very excited about it so thank you for chatting to us again yeah, thank you. and we really look forward to seeing the film and we hope we can catch up again sometime absolutely thank you so much guys can't wait thanks Zach thank you what's the plan save the planet that's the plan